Hello friends, in this video we will discuss pagination in integration. We cannot bring all the data in one API call. We need to bring the data in multiple chunks through pagination. For example, if there are 1000 records in the target table, then we cannot bring all the 1000 records in one API call. We can make the page size of 100 and we can make 10 API calls to bring the data in multiple pages. We will see the pagination in REST API Explorer first and then we will go to service portal and see how to trigger it from the client side. And then uh, we'll have a use case where we'll build the UI to bring the incidents from the target instance and then uh, build the pagination and based on the page size, get the data from the target table on the target instance. Before going to REST API Explorer, let's see how we can do that in Glide Record. We have a function called choose window in Glide Record. Uh, this choose window takes the uh, range here. So here I'm telling show the incidents from uh, 0 to 10. So if I run this, then we'll get uh, this one to 10 here. Okay. Now if I change this range from 10 to 20, okay, then uh, this is, uh, we get the uh, second page here. Okay. Now if you want uh, the third page data, then we'll say 20 to 30. Okay. Now if you want to make a simple calculation here, so what we'll do is let me just uh, add variable page size is equal to we'll say page size is 10 okay and then we'll say page number page number is equal to a uh, first page number for example okay okay now here for page number one we should have zero right zero and 10 so it should start from zero zero is our offset so we'll define one more variable here called offset we'll see all of these uh in the integration as well uh so offset will be our page number minus one so it is page number one one minus one is zero uh, but we'll multiply that with what uh, the page size okay so for page number one it is one minus one that is zero into page size that is zero here okay and so we'll replace this with offset okay and this will be offset plus 10 right offset plus page size Okay, so let me just run this. So for page uh, number one, we got the result here. Now, if I simply change the page number two, then we have the result for the second page. Page number three, we have the result for the third page here. Okay. Okay, now let's go to Explorer to see the same thing in Explorer. Okay, now uh, I have the table API here. I have selected retrieve the records from the table. I'll select the table that is incident. Okay, and uh, I'll just add the query order by. So that is uh, here we have added order by number, right? So in uh, the API, we need to add it like this order by and then number. Okay in the sysbam query itself okay and uh, in the fields we'll add number so if you have not watched the first video uh, then please go and watch that and we'll add the limit as 10 okay and then we don't have the offset property here so we'll add that extra property here that is sys pam underscore offset okay now uh, here it will take the offset uh, offset is what this right page number minus one into page size so that is zero for the first page okay now this is zero okay so i'll just send this okay now we can see we have the result here for the page one that is incident one to ten okay now if i just change the offset okay uh, the offset value for the second page starts from uh, so if we go here then page number is two two minus one is one into page size is 10 1 into 10 is 10 the offset for the uh, second page is 10 okay so i'll just add 10 and it now brings the data for the second page okay now in the api we are just providing the first range here not the second range okay that is getting calculated uh, from the syspam limit itself okay the limit is nothing but the page size so if it is 10, uh, then based on uh, this uh, sysfam limit that considers as the page size, uh, it calculates the end range as well automatically. Okay, we don't need to give the end range. In the offset, we'll just say, send the start range. Then based on the page size uh, or the sysfam limit, uh, it calculates 
the end range. Okay, now we'll go through our use case and create uh, the table here in the service portal. Before that, we'll call uh, the API from the client side in the service portal. Okay, so we have this blank widget here and uh, we have this blank page. We don't have anything on this page. Okay, now uh, if we go to REST API Explorer here, then we can see there are different scripts here. We have seen this script already uh, in our first video on integration, but we'll go to JavaScript now. Okay, and we'll uh, select this code and we'll copy this code okay now let's go to widget and just paste the code here in the client side okay now do we need request body we need request body in only a uh, post call so that is empty so we'll remove that we don't need that okay and request body is passed in this send function so we'll remove that as well okay now this is our source instance but uh, in the last video we have discussed already uh, this is our target instance okay now i'll just uh, copy this instance name and i'll paste it here so we'll get the data from this instance okay and uh, here we can see uh, there is a uh, header request header that is authorization where we'll pass uh, this is uh, the username and this should be the password we have already seen uh, in the in our last video that uh, we have created property for that so username property is there where we'll store the username and in the password property we have stored the password in the password two way uh, type okay now we'll fetch these values and we'll use those values uh to add here okay now how to do that uh to fetch that we need to come to the server side i'll say data dot username is equal to gs dot get property and then username okay we'll get it from the username property same way uh, data dot password is equal to gs dot get property And then password okay now uh, to use them in uh, client side we'll just uh, remove this so i'll just add c dot data dot so if it is data dot here then uh, it will be c dot data because c is the scope for the client side okay so i'll just use this c dot data dot uh, then uh, username okay and i'll remove this this is c dot data dot password okay so now we have added uh, the username and password okay and uh, here they are adding it to some html element so uh, this dot status will give us the status and this dot response will give us the response okay now let's uh, add an alert to print them status Okay, I'll add one more alert. This dot response. Let's save this. Okay, now let me go and refresh this page. We are getting uh, HTTP status as zero, and we are not getting any response. It's because if I uh, open the console, then we can see the error here uh, because of course policy. Okay, now we are trying to connect to our target instance, right? This instance and uh, course is uh, restricting uh, to get the data from this instance. So that's why we need to create the course rules here. Okay, so if we type course in uh, the navigation, then we get this course rules. So I'll just open this. I'll create the new course rule for our source instance. Okay, so I'll just uh, copy the instance URL. Uh, then I'll add that as a domain here. Okay. Now, what is the uh, REST API we are trying to query? That is table API, right? So we are trying to query table API. And then here I will add simply the name, okay, name of this. Okay. Now this is this max age is the number of seconds uh, the request will be cached by the browser. So we'll add some uh, thousand seconds here. Okay. Now here HTTP methods which are allowed are get and post. So if we want, uh, then we can add these as well okay now we'll just uh save this yeah before saving i think a uh, slash at the end is not allowed so we'll just remove that and we'll save this okay now we'll go back to our page again now i'll just refresh this okay now uh, the response is 200 okay earlier this was zero okay now we have the response as well here so this is how we can call the api from the client side 
okay i'll just comment this and uh, there is one more way we can call the api from the client side that is using dollar http okay let's go to angular js documentation to see that so this is how we can write that so let me just copy this and i'll go back and i'll just paste this okay now if we use dollar http here okay then this dollar http should be passed in the controller function here on the top okay so we have passed that now this is the get method and we'll just copy the url from here okay and i'll add that url here okay and uh, after the successful response uh, we should get it here right so i'll just add alert and then we have the response so response okay and let me just save this now let me just try to refresh this okay there is some error It is saying 401 unauthorized because we have not added the uh, header here, right? That's why we can add the headers like this. So we'll just add headers and then colon, and that will be an object. So first header uh, should be content type, right? So we'll add content type, and that is application or JSON. Okay, and the important one is authorization uh, here it is authorization so we'll add authorization here okay and i'll just copy this thing okay. copy and then i'll just add it here. now let me refresh the page again now we have the object here so uh, let me just try to instead of alert i'll just do console.log okay now i'll refresh it again okay now we have the data here so we can see uh, it's response dot data and inside the data we have the result and there we have uh, the data for uh the second page because the offset we passed is 10 here okay so this is how we can call the api from the client side okay and we can uh do a call from the rest message v2 as well uh, we can do the communication from client side to server side and then in the server side we can use the rest message v2 okay so i have already made a video uh, from client to server communication on service portal so you can go and watch that as well i'll put the link in the description okay now we'll remove this and we'll uh, use the above one okay. so i'll remove as i have removed that i don't want this now so i'll remove this as well so yeah we'll do it like this okay and uh, now here we'll add the page size as well data dot page size is equal to 10 okay then data dot page number uh, will add page number initially as one and uh, here uh, we will add this limit is the red so this limit is nothing but uh, our page size so that should be c dot data dot page size okay and uh, we'll calculate the offset uh, so we have already calculated that in this way so it will be uh, c dot data dot page number okay minus one and then multiplied by c dot data dot page size page size okay so this is our limit that is the page size and offset will be like this okay okay now uh, let's add this in a function okay so i'll just do this I'll say uh, get incident is equal to function and then we'll just do it like this. Okay. 
okay so in uh, the response if we get 200 so we'll add here if this dot status is equal to equal to 200 okay then uh, the response this dot response contains uh, what mm, the incidents right so and that is uh, in the stringify format okay so we'll just pass them and store them in a variable called c dot data dot incident incidents okay so we'll just do json dot pass and then we'll add that here okay let me just save this okay now we'll go on html side okay i'll just remove this and i'll add a new table okay then i'll add a tr inside it okay and in the tr i'll add to th first the headings th okay first we'll show the number okay and in the next th we'll show short description okay but uh, we are bringing only number right uh, in the sysfam fields we have only number so i'll add short description as well description okay and let me go back here okay now uh, we'll uh, we need to add the data right so for that uh, we'll do tr okay and then ng repeat so we want uh, uh, 10 rows here right page size is 10 so we want 10 rows so that's why we'll do ng repeat ng repeat and uh, where we'll do ng repeat we have stored the response in c dot data dot incidents okay so i'll do uh, inc in c dot data dot incidents okay and now uh, we have the td here so we'll add the td that is table data and uh, the first one is what inc dot number okay and this is the formula we need to add that in the double curly brace okay and then we'll add one more td that is in double curly brace we'll add inc dot short underscore description okay now let me just save this okay and let me uh, refresh the page now okay uh, we don't have any error as well and any data as well so let me just go back and check here if we are getting the data or not so i'll add console.log this dot response okay let me just refresh this okay uh, okay we are not getting it because we are not calling this function okay for the first time we need to call it right so we are calling this function okay let me save this let me refresh uh, get incidents okay so this should be c dot get incidents and we should call it c dot get incidents okay now let me refresh get incidents is not a function so we need to call this after we declare this okay. so we'll just add it here save and let me just refresh it now okay we have the data here but that is in the result right so that's why we have the issue uh, so we'll add here uh, after passing we'll just use a result okay uh, so if we can see here in the result we have the array okay now we have added that and saved it let me just refresh again okay so now we can see the data here okay let's add some css to make this uh, look good so we'll just go here we'll add the css on td okay we'll just add a padding five pixel and add border one pixel solid and black let me save this okay and i'll just refresh the page 
okay so now we can see uh, the data here and it starts from uh, inc002 so if we go to the target instance uh, here so we can see uh, this is starting from inc002 now we'll just add the buttons here below so i'll add one div okay and i'll add two buttons okay uh, first i'll give the class as btn btn primary this is the bootstrap class okay i'll just copy this and i'll add the next one okay and this will be our previous and this is our next okay so to go to the next page and this is to go to the previous page okay now i'll add the id to identify this okay so i'll add previous and i'll add this as next Okay. Now here, when we click on next button, we need to increment the page number and then call the get incidents again, right? So what I'll do, I'll add ng click here and I'll call a function c dot increment number. Okay, any function we can call. Okay, and then I'll just go here in the client side. I'll just call that function. function and then uh, inside the function we'll do c dot data dot page number plus plus we'll increment the page number and then we'll call c dot get incidents okay now we'll do the reverse uh, for the previous okay it will be ng click and c dot set decrement number and uh, we'll just copy this and i'll replace the function with the decrement number function and this will be minus minus okay let me just save this okay now let me refresh the page once Okay. Uh, now uh, it's getting the data from the API that's why it is taking some time so we can add the loader there at that time now let me just click on next and see if uh, the data changes yes you can see the data changed changed here okay okay uh, in the get incidents function I just committed the code uh, where we have used the JavaScript uh, way to call the API uh, now I have replaced that with the angular one uh, which we discussed already and just uh, added c dot data dot incidents in the response function a uh, success function and uh, the response is response dot data dot result okay and we don't need to parse it because this is already an object here okay now i have seen that there is a improvement in the performance okay uh, so we have the first page i'll just click on next we have the second page now third page fourth page okay and if i click on previous then uh, and this is our first page okay now we are on first page and if i click on previous we don't have any other page right so we, the data does not get changed but we get the error uh, in the console here okay because there is no data in the zeroth page right so when we do a previous it uh, decrements the page number by minus one okay so for that what we'll do when the page number is one we'll just uh, disable the previous okay so for that we'll just go here Okay, we, uh, we will add here ng disabled. Okay, and uh, here will uh, when when it should be disabled when c dot data dot page number is equal to equal to one. Okay, so when page number is equal to one, we should disable the previous button. Okay, now let me refresh this. Okay, so we can see uh, now the page is disabled because uh, we are on page number one. Sorry, previous button is disabled because we are on page number one. Now, if I click on uh, next, okay, now this is enabled because there is a previous page present. Okay, so if I go to back, so uh, we are on first page again. No, no, this is disabled. Okay, now same way, if we go to the last page, okay, uh, so we have how many records here? We have 83 records here uh, in this incident. Uh, incidents table so uh, the last page will be the ninth page okay, where uh, we'll having uh, three records 
okay now if we are on this page then the next button should not be enabled because if we click on next there is nothing here okay this is error right so to calculate that we must know the total number of pages okay so uh, to uh, know the total number of pages we must know the total number of incidents okay so for that uh, we have a api called aggregate api so this is nothing but the glide aggregate we use uh, in the scripting okay so aggregate api uh, so let me just add incident and i'll add count as true okay so i'll just send this okay. so now we have 200 and we have the incident count here on this source instance so same api we will use in the script uh, in service portal to get the count of the incidents in the target instance now let me just go here uh, i'll remove this commented code i don't want that now okay now uh, i'll simply copy this function and make the modifications okay now this is a get incidents count okay and we'll change the url uh, to this one okay now the url will be this okay and the instance will be this the target instance okay we'll just change the instance name okay now we are ready here now we must add the course for this as well right so i have already added the course for that that is uh, the aggregate api in the target instance okay so uh, now this is ready uh, so everything is fine so let me just console the response first log response okay and we'll call this here okay now i'll just refresh the page okay okay now we have uh, so it should be that data dot result dot stats dot com okay uh, so we'll go back here and here what we'll do is we'll add a new uh, variable here that is c dot data dot total uh, incidents okay is equal to response dot data dot result dot stats dot count okay so it should be a response dot data dot result dot stats dot count okay now this gives uh, the total number here total number of incidents so we'll just make it variable and now we need to find the total pages right so what we'll do is uh, variable yeah variable total pages is equal to total incidents okay divided by uh, we'll do a c dot data dot page size okay now uh, 83 divided by 10 83 are the total incidents right so divided by 10 is 8.3 so we need to round it to the next integer right that is 9 so for that what we'll do is uh, we'll do math dot seal there is a function called math dot seal there will add total pages okay now this will uh, take to the okay, next integer basically 8.3 will be uh, changed to 9 now we'll say c dot data dot total pages okay now this is 9 right so uh, in the now i will go back to the html now uh, here we'll add ng disabled disable is equal to c dot data dot page number Let's say c dot data dot page number is equal to equal to c dot data dot total pages okay. if the page number is nine that is uh is equal to total pages that is also nine then we'll disable the next button okay now let me uh, just check this we'll refresh the page let me remove the console okay now this is uh for the first page previous is disabled we'll click on next next and this is last page now the next is disabled okay so we don't have any uh, issues here okay now we want to show if you want to show one two three uh, as the page number here then we can do that as well but this is how we can do the pagination here 
ओके आई होप यू लाइक दिस वीडियो इफ सो देन प्लीज हिट द थम आइकन एंड एड योर वैल्यूएबल सजेशन टू द कॉमेंट एंड शेयर द वीडियो विद योर फ्रेंड्स एंड फॉर मोर वीडियोज लाइक दिस सब्सक्राइब द चैनल